Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at something called raycasting and raycasting basically involves sending out a ray and finding out what it hits. Um, so you can kind of imagine it like a robot that sends out a signal, um, some sort of ultrasonic signal and can detect nearby objects and see things in front of it. So that's what raycasting does. So have an imaginary ray, it's sent out and find out um, what it hits or what's in front of it. So it's used by game developers to find distance between players and another object. It's used for aiming, it's used for detecting nearby objects and also for finding line of sight. Okay, so um, there's a few, there's a method that we can use um, for ray casting and there's a few um, parameters that the method takes. The first is the origin of the position. So um, where the ray starts. And that can hold three floats, so the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So that's the first parameter where the ray starts from. Okay. The second parameter is the direction that the ray will travel. So it might travel forward from that object, um, or from the player, or for, from a camera. And the, uh, the third um, parameter is the float, and it's the distance. So it's the distance that the ray is going to travel before it stops. So basically, how far it can detect, or how far it can see. Um, and then the last parameter specifies what layers will be hit by the ray. So um, you can exclude certain layers from the from the ray or from its um, from what it can see. So those last two parameters, the distance parameter and um, the mask parameter, those are optional. So basically, if they're left out, the ray will travel forever because there's no distance specified, and it will hit all objects because there's no masks specified. Okay, so what we'll do is um, we'll try out that the ray, raycast method, we'll use that and I've got a scene here and basically I've got a camera, I've got a directional light which really doesn't matter um, and I've got spheres, I've got eight spheres, okay. It doesn't, how many, it doesn't matter how many objects you have um, but to try this out you need to basically have a camera and you need a few objects. So um, maybe at least two or three, um, or actually for this, you could just have one object, like one sphere, but for what we're going to do in a few minutes, you'll need a few objects. So I've got about eight spheres here. They're all set out in different places. If we look at the camera, all of those spheres can be seen by the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new script. I'm just going to the scripts folder and right click in there and click on create C sharp script. And I'm just going to call it my Raycast script. Okay, I'm going to attach it to the camera. All right, so we're going to use um, the camera to see the object. So the Raycast will be sent from the camera. I'm going to double click on that script so that I can edit it in MonoDevelop. Okay, so basically I'm going to go to the update method. So this code will be called every single frame. I'm going to add an if statement. Okay. And inside that if statement, I'm going to use that raycast method that I was talking about a minute ago, um, that uses those different parameters. Okay. So inside the if statement, I'm going to say physics. So if physics dot raycast capital R and then in brackets transform dot position and then transform dot forward. Okay, so we're going to say basically this is the first parameter. This is where the raycast originates from, so where it's being sent from. So that's the position of this object that the script's attached to, which happens to be the camera. And then the second parameter here is the direction that the raycast is going to travel from that position. So it's going to travel forward. Okay. And the last parameter I'm going to add is the distance as a float value. So I'm going to make it travel um, a value of oops, maybe about 20. And I'm going to close off those brackets. Okay. Now, in the if statement, we've got the condition there. We need an action now. So we need something to happen if basically the camera or raycast that's attached to this camera sees um, an object in front of it within a distance of 20. Okay, so it's going forward, the raycast or ray is being sent forward, 
distance of 20, so it needs to see something in there. And what we'll do is we'll just display a simple print message if it can see something. So we'll just have in the action here, we'll have print and we'll just say something simple like something is in front of the camera. Okay, and that with a semicolon after closing those brackets and I'll just save it, command S, go back to Unity and uh, okay, just go back to that code. Just change these to lowercase t's on the transform. So just um, take note of that. Sometimes the autocomplete can actually mess up what you're doing. It will correct something and think it's doing the right thing when it's not. For this, we actually need transform in a lowercase t. So if it corrects it to an uppercase t, just change it back to lowercase t. All right, now I've got that error. It's gone from the console. Okay, so to test it out, firstly, I'm gonna rotate the camera. So I'll grab the rotate tool and I'm gonna rotate the camera so it can't actually see any of those objects. So I'll go that way and I click on play. And um, what I might do is I'll just make it so it's not maximized on play. I'll just show the console. So I'll click on play and it can't see anything. So there's no message there being displayed in the console. But if I go and rotate the camera back it should now see some objects so if I click on play um, should see something so it might just be that the um, there's yeah so there are no objects actually right directly in front of the camera in the middle of the screen there so just move it so that we've got something pretty much right smack bang in the middle and see if that works. There we go. So we've got this red sphere. It's right in the middle. So the way I had it a few seconds ago is I had the objects in front of the camera, but there wasn't anything in the middle where it was actually sending the ray cast to it. It was sending it straight forward down there. So now that there's an object there in front of the camera that's um, basically being hit by that ray, we're getting this message here printing out every single frame in the console saying, something is in front of the camera. Okay, so let's clear the console after stopping that. And now what we'll do is we're gonna change this script up a little bit. So there's actually another way um, that the Raycast method can be used. And it can be used to find out which object the ray is actually collided with. So it can use a type of variable called a Raycast hit. And basically it can return back what object or the name of what object it, it's actually hit. Um, so we won't do it with this example. What we'll do is we'll create, well, use the same scene, but we're going to change the script a little bit to um, sort of turn this into a little bit of a game. And then we'll add that, um, that way of basically sending back what object has been hit by the ray. So um, again, just if, create a scene and if you don't have a few objects if you only have one then add some more objects so we need a, a new scene with um, a few 3d shapes around the main camera in your scene so right in front of the main camera and these shapes should be close enough to the camera so that they can be seen clearly when you run the game okay so at least three or four shapes spaced out nicely like i've got here and create your script and attach to your camera so I'm going to use the existing script and I'm just going to um, delete what's there and add some different code now. Okay, so firstly we're going to add some code to the update method inside this script. So in the update method, we're going to create two float variables. One is called float x direction, which is equal to input dot get axis mouse x. Okay, and hopefully that looks familiar if you've gone through um, the tutorial on mouse button click detection and mouse movement. So basically, we've got a, a float variable here called x direction, and that's equal to um, the position of the mouse. So it's going to get the mouse's, or the, it's going to get the position of the mouse on the x axis or the movement of the mouse 
so how far it's moved since the last frame and which direction. And we'll do that for the y-axis as well. So float y direction equals input dot get axis. I'll add mouse y there. Oops. Okay, so basically we're going to find out the movement of the mouse on both axes up and down, left and right, across the screen. Okay, and then we'll add transform and it should be a lowercase t as well here. So if it corrects it to uppercase, make sure you fix that up. So transform dot rotate. And then we're going to have in brackets minus y direction and x direction. And then after that, comma, zero. Okay, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to rotate the camera um, following the movement of the mouse. So when the mouse moves left, the camera moves left. Or sorry, when the mouse moves left, the camera rotates left. When the mouse moves right, the camera rotates right. And same with the y-axis, when the mouse moves up and down, the camera rotates up and down. All right. Um, and then we're going to add this. Um, we're going to call a, um, a method here. And it's going to be called check if raycast hit. Okay, so we'll call a method there, which we're about to create in just a moment. All right, so that's all that goes inside the update method. Now what we need to do is add some more code. We need to actually create this check if raycast hit method somewhere. And so we need to add that inside our class, but outside of all other methods. So in other words, not inside the start or update methods okay so just underneath the update method and outside of it we can create this method so void check if ray cast hit okay and inside the curly brackets for this method okay notice now that this when we call the method here it's no longer red it's now black because the method's been created so it's not kind of calling it method that doesn't exist. We're going to add these lines here. So we're going to add raycast hit hit. <laughs> okay. So we're going to add raycast hit hit. And then underneath that, we're going to have if physics dot raycast transform. Now we want that in a lowercase t. So if it changes it, to uppercase, make sure you fix it. So transform.position, transform.forward, and out hit. Okay, so just change that to capital T, so we'll change that back to lowercase t. All right, so basically where you see out, so here we've got out hit. Basically where you see out, it means that whatever object was hit by the raycast, it will be stored in this hit variable, which we created up here, raycast hit hit. So Whatever object was hit by the raycast, it will be stored in the hit variable when this method finishes running. So it's a little bit different to what we did last time. Basically, we had this code last time. So we had um, if physics.raycast transform position transform forward. We had that, and then we also added a distance of how far it would travel. But now we're adding out hit, which will basically um, grab the name of the object that this ray hits and it will store it in a hit variable um, and we can then display that. So we can use that later on. Okay, so we'll close those brackets off. There's two sets of brackets there, so we'll close that. And that's the if statement condition. Now we'll add some curly brackets to put in what will occur if this if statement condition evaluates to true. So we'll add a print message again. So print hit.collider dot game object dot name. So basically this is going to be the name of the object that has been hit by the raycast. So we've got out hit. It's going to, when it um, sees an object, it's going to get its name. And then here it's going to show that object's name, the one that was hit. And we're going to concatenate that. We're going to add it to this string here. So I'm going to say the object's name so for example, sphere one, 
and then has been destroyed. Okay, so a little message there that's going to display in the console. All right, now once we get into user interface, which we'll look at in the next tutorial, you could have this message displayed on the screen for the user rather than the actual, um, rather than just in the console, which the user won't see when they run the game. So we'll be looking at user interface pretty soon, but we've got print.hitcollider.gameobject.name plus has been destroyed. So when you center the screen on sphere one, it will say sphere one has been destroyed. When you move the mouse and center it on another object, it will say that that object's been destroyed. Um, but we haven't actually destroyed the object yet. So we're going to add it after that line. So we won't, we don't want to destroy the object and then display this message because, um, the object will be destroyed. So we, we want to just basically destroy it after. So we'll have destroy and then hit dot collider. So we're getting the name of that object again, hit dot collider dot game object. And that's it. So it's going to say what object has been destroyed and then it will actually destroy it. All right, that's it. Um, just check those curly brackets there. All good. Yep. Okay. So save that. Now we'll go back to the scene. All right. Uh, scripts just updating. No messages there yet in the console to say is anything wrong with that script. So now what we'll do is run the scene and notice that when the mouse Oh, notice the mouse will move the camera around. So when I move the mouse around, the camera will move around. And also watch the console. So see when I center the camera on each object in the scene, those objects are going to disappear. So they're going to be destroyed. And a message will also display in the console saying which object has been destroyed. Okay, so I'll play it. All right, I've already destroyed one object because that sphere was centered on the screen. So it said sphere one has been destroyed. Now, if I center it on another object, there we go. Sphere seven has been destroyed and it disappears. Sphere four. Okay, so as I move the mouse around, the camera rotates. And as I center the screen on different objects, they're being destroyed, they're disappearing. And then I see down here in the console, which objects have been destroyed. All right, so that's it. Now you can extend this game by adding a score or a time variable and displaying the score on the screen. So once you look at graphical user interfaces, then you can start adding messages up on the screen, like a score, display what object just was just destroyed, um, maybe a time limit. Um, so you might have a time countdown and you've got to destroy all of those objects before a certain amount of time. And so, yeah, that's, um, that's basically it for ray casting. So have a go at that, try it out in your own scene, um, and then uh, watch out for the next tutorial on graphical user interfaces. Thanks for watching.